This video gives a justification of the chain rule for functions of several variables. We'll focus on one version of the chain rule in which z is a function of the variables x and y, and x and y are both functions of t. This version of the chain rule says that dz dt is equal to partial z partial x times dx dt plus partial z partial y times dy dt. We can give an informal justification of the chain rule using the idea of a differential. Recall that the actual change in height of our function, delta z, is approximately equal to the change in height of the tangent plane, or the differential dz. In fact, if our function is differentiable, which we're assuming it is, then we can write delta z as equal to dz plus some epsilon, where epsilon over the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared goes to zero as delta x delta y goes to zero, zero. I can rewrite this by expanding out the differential, that's f sub x delta x plus f sub y delta y. Now I'll divide all my terms by delta t, and from calculus one, I can write dz dt is the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta z delta t. So that's the limit of the expression above. Now the limit of delta x delta t is just dx dt, and the limit of delta y delta t is dy dt, so we're left with having to compute the limit as delta t goes to zero of epsilon over delta t. Since I know that epsilon over the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared is going to be heading towards zero, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of this expression by delta x squared plus delta y squared. I'll rearrange my limit, and now I'll pull the delta t inside the square root sign. As delta t goes to zero, this expression is going to zero by the assumption that f is differentiable, and this expression is just going to the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. This is an expression having to do with arc length, but the important thing for us is that it has a finite value. If we have something that's going to zero times something that's going to a finite value, that's just zero. And therefore, our limit, our dz dt, is just f sub x dx dt plus f sub y dy dt as wanted. This video gives a justification of the chain rule using the idea of the differential.